Welcome back to another edition of NASCAR America at Home, continuing to break down the race at Bristol. And, you know, as we were talking, guys, last night about the, uh, the post-race show, uh, I thought about, for you guys as drivers, I mean, for the guys who are out there racing, Dale, is there anywhere, um, any track where you would notice that the fans weren't there more as a driver than Bristol? It just seems like that pageantry was always sort of part of, of the feeling of racing there. Yes, yeah, one of the great things about racing at Bristol, the track is outstanding and a lot of fun to, to race on, but, but another part of it is the experience for the fans. You know they're there to see uh, something spectacular happen, uh, just as they saw yesterday in the race, uh, but on TV, not being there in person. And from the time that you arrive at the track uh, back uh, before this, uh, you, there are always just uh, thousands of fans around the entire time. And it's one of the places – that I found, Kyle, that you could actually see the fans there almost every lap. Even though you're concentrating, somewhere you can see that this place is always filled up. Yeah, it, 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 you come out of turn four and you look down the, the short straightaways that they have, um, and it's a sea of people. It's a sea of color. It's a sea of flash bulbs. Uh, and you see that lap after lap after lap. Uh, the only time you don't is when you're running on the side of the bank, when you go through the corner <laughs> like that. But it is, and you feel. You, you can feel the noise. You can hear the noise. Remember when we were there uh, and Di Benedetto, we're standing in victory lane and Matt Di Benedetto runs second and the emotion, the crowd, it was overwhelming. Even though the race, the cars were, were not running, the race was over with, it was incredibly loud. It was like 40 stock cars were running uh, when they were cheering for Matt that day. So I, I think when you, when you go to any place, any place we go, no matter what it is, it's that little racetrack, that mile or half mile racetrack that's just like a cylinder and everything just echoes in there. So yeah, you see it and you feel it. I think yesterday's race that they might have even would have fought after that race was over if fans would have been there. But why do you want to have a fight when nobody's watching? <laughs> well, I think it's just something to, to point out because this is sort of this different landscape and as drivers, yeah, I mean, they've all raced at Bristol. They know what 500 laps feels like, but it, it doesn't look the same necessarily. And I just bring it up because that's the kind of thing the three of us would talk about, uh, you know, while we were watching a race uh, in person. But I do want to know, Kyle, as we continue the conversation, was there a note um, that you made while you were watching the race, something that stood out to you about yesterday's race at Bristol? You know what? I, I really, uh, what, what was, was amazing to me was the number of cautions. Uh, you know, they had 17 cautions. I think there's only be, been 23 races in, since they've started paying attention to stuff and recording the history of some of this stuff uh, that have had 17 or more cautions. And, and what that allowed for me was watching it was we saw early on Kyle Busch have a penalty. We saw uh, Christopher Bell have a penalty. Uh, for an uncontrolled tire. We saw multiple penalties handed out for pit road. And this is a crazy pit road. You enter it in one place and have to exit on the opposite side of the racetrack under caution. But under green, you can use the back stretch pits and the entire front stretch pits. So it's a little bit complicated for a driver. It's not your normal pit road. So we always have a lot of penalties. But the penalties yesterday, because of the 17 cautions, because of the 500 laps, and because of the way the race played out, really didn't penalize anybody. Kyle Busch recovered, came back. Christopher Bell came back. Almost everyone that was assessed a penalty for Pitt Road recovered in some way, shape, or form. So uh, if that had been Charlotte, if it was Atlanta this coming weekend, if it was another race, uh, those penalties would take you out of a race. But it seemed like, for whatever reason yesterday, uh, that the penalties were not really as devastating or a hindrance as they had been in the past. Yeah, there were a lot of calls, you know, hard racing. And I think that what struck me was how the, the groove changed so many different times throughout the day. Uh, you know, when you had the options to run on the bottom of the racetrack, uh, up at the top, uh, even the middle of the racetrack at times was a, a pretty good place to be. So the drivers were really chasing around, trying to find where the speed was, uh, where it was uh, on the fresh tires, and then where it moved to as you got a few laps on the tires and the air pressure built up. And I think that's what made for outstanding racing to me. And because they didn't have practice to adjust on their cars, the adjustments that were being made on these pit stops and giving the drivers uh, and making bigger swings at it and giving them a chance to, to make those changes uh, in their driving style and uh, chasing the, the track around. And as it turned out, we ended up with two completely different grooves, uh, but both were successful in being able to be used and, and made for great racing. Dale, you mentioned some of those guys who, who had speed, certainly early on. 
Uh, you put Ryan Blaney on that list. Uh, once again, though, not getting the, the result that he wanted. Yeah, you know, it's kind of been his year. Uh, I think he's had speed at a lot of places, but it looked like maybe they had kind of turned those things around and we're going to put together a few good races for finishes. And, and this has been a racetrack that Ryan Blaney just knows what it takes to get around there to be fast, but he's got to figure out a way to get it to the end. And, and I think the experience showed up in guys like Kyle was mentioning, Kyle Bush getting that penalty, going to the rear. He knew he had plenty of time to get there uh, and, and make his way back to the front. Uh, it was that experience. Brad Keselowski getting those tires at the end. Uh, he knew that even though the laps go by quickly there, that if things ran his way, uh, he didn't need to tear his car up trying to get to that point. Uh, and, and I think Ryan Blaney had such a fast car. Trying to pass Brad Keselowski at that time of the race, uh, they, they weren't even to the halfway point yet, uh, trying to make that move uh, as they were in a lot of heavy traffic. Uh, uh, yeah, he'll look back on that, and the next time that they go there uh, for a race, which will be in September, uh, he's going to say, I'm going to do this better. I've got a fast race car. I know how to get around this place, uh, and that experience uh, will bode well for him, and he'll eventually get to victory lane. But he gave uh, an opportunity away there with what was maybe the fastest race car. Yeah, and, and agreed. Uh, and we have seen him be fast a lot of places. We saw him a couple of years ago be fast a lot of places, but – Bristol is just a place, uh, Matt D. Benedetto, it's just a place that guys like that seem to latch on to early. I, I, another group that I watched um, that I continue to be impressed with, John Hunter Nemechek, uh, Tyler Reddick, these rookies, no practice, not been in a cup car at a lot of these racetracks, throw them in and they're running up front and they're running with Jimmy Johnson and they're running with Kevin Harvick and they're running with these guys and running in the top 10. And yes, they're not challenging for the win yet. Uh, I think Tyler Reddick has, has probably gotten as close as anybody else. And we talked about Christopher Bell uh, finishing in the top 10. But it's been an impressive group uh, of, of young rookies that have stepped into this sport. And they drove this race. And, and maybe it was out of fear. Maybe it was out of fear. Meant, as Dale said, know when to go and know when not to. Maybe it was out of fear. They didn't want to get in trouble. They drove like veterans. Tyler Reddick got caught up in an accident. Um, uh, John Hunter had some, some mechanical issues. But those guys drove like you want a driver, uh, like you want to see a driver run Bristol. Yeah, you mentioned some of the names. I mean, John Hunter Nemechek ended up with a pretty good um, result. Um, Christopher Bell, of course, uh, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention that Clint Boyer and Jimmy Johnson both came away with a, you know, top three finishes. But another driver who, when you think Bristol, um, it, it has done pretty well there, but again, didn't have the result to show. Um, another sort of bad day, Dale, for, for Ricky Stenhouse. Yeah, it was unfortunate for Stenhouse because he had a really good car coming off of a, a really good race uh, at Charlotte before. And so he was needing to put together some back-to-back -to -back runs uh, to really help him there. But, but unfortunate, uh, got a little bit of a tap. And that is just part of Bristol racing and, and the, the bad luck that, that you can have uh, even whenever you're not doing anything wrong at that particular time. So hopefully uh, we're seeing more speed. Uh, from he and his race team, and that would mean that he's up front battling uh, a lot more. But when you, you just mentioned Clint Boyer, was there anybody that needed something good to happen more than Clint Boyer after they've come back from this? Because he's had some good speed in his cars, but he had no finishes to show for it. So it's nice to see that Jimmy Johnson right there knocking on the door to end this winless streak. That's going to happen before long, and uh, it's going to be fun to watch uh, the celebration whenever he does make that happen. Bubba Wallace had a good day also uh, in coming home with the top ten. Yeah, I was going to mention Bubba Wallace. I, I, obviously, I know the guy that owns that team, so I was going to mention Bubba <laughs> just from the standpoint that he had a horrendous Charlotte. Uh, lost a left rear wheel bearing in one race and lost a left front wheel bearing in the other race. So it was just crazy uh, what had happened to him at Charlotte and to come back and be able to run just in the top 15, to finish in the top 10, but to be able to run in the top 15 all day long. Um, Bristol is that place, and, and, and Dale, we talk about it all the time. Bristol is the great equalizer. You can take the teams that spend $20 million and the teams that spend $2 million and put them on the racetrack, and they're that close, that close to each other. Uh, you put yourself in the right position, you can have a career day. We saw Matt DiBenedetto do it. We've seen other guys do it in the past. Uh, but there were a lot of teams that had great days at Bristol, and they needed it at this point in time. Well, before we say goodbye, I guess to early happy birthday to you, Kyle Petty. Oh, late happy birthday to you, Chris Devota. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, mine will be uh, tomorrow, I guess, uh, on Tuesday. Yeah. Happy birthday, buddy. 
Yeah, thank you, man. Thank you. That's um, and Krista's was oh, we did twenty nine. Twenty nine again. I'll take. You know what? I'll take thirty nine again at this point. All right, all right. Take it. Take whatever you want to take. <laughs> all right. Thanks, guys, as always, and uh, we look forward, of course, to the to the racing this weekend in Atlanta. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I thought I was supposed to think of a. Oh yeah. I, did, I almost totally for yes. Yeah, see, yeah. And, and I had 24 hours to think about it. So 24 hours. Kyle, cool. what would your song title be for the race? My song race? title would be "I'm Taking Tommy and Gina Out and It's Living on a Prayer" uh, because that's what those guys drive like. Like they're living on a prayer every lap up there. It's close to home, doesn't it, Krista? Yes, it does. I often <laughs> wonder how Tommy and Gina are doing these days. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Hey, motorsports fans, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe before you go for all the latest news and highlights across motorsports.